With the latest generation of telescopes, including NASA's Kepler mission, thousands of planets have now been found orbiting distant stars. So this is the Kepler Orrery, which shows the orbits and the sizes of the planets. So these are candidates that the Kepler space missions found. So these are transiting planets. We can now see that our own beloved solar system is the oddball in the galaxy. And up there on the top left, you can see the orbits of the four innermost planets of our solar system from Mercury out to Mars. And what you can see is the huge diversity of all the different planetary systems. Each set of rings shows a different planetary system, and each blob a different planet with its size and orbit. They break every rule we used to know. So we have large gas giant planets in there, and then you can see the really short period, really weird solar systems. They really don't look anything like our own solar system. And some of these planets actually have orbits of just a few hours. And there's even systems spiraling around multiple planets in here. what we might discover in this rich smorgasbord of planets. It is ridiculous, actually. <laughs> what is going on with that? We know that Jupiter-sized gas giants would never have formed so close to a star. They must have taken shape far away before being transplanted, causing epic celestial havoc en route. With these very strange orbits, it looks as though it's been a very violent process to actually take one of these planets and just chuck it into a different orbit. That's very violent. One of the easiest ways to do that is to have a collision, take two planets, uh, interaction between them, and you can eject one planet and fling the other planet really close into the star. These giant gas planets are the bully of the playground. They have the power to throw other planets around like a game of cosmic pinball. Beasts the size of Jupiter are so vast, they can eject entire planets from the system. They can launch them into crazy polar orbits. can even destroy entire worlds. A planet like Jupiter, the mass of Jupiter, the size of it, just dominates planetary systems. And it's got the power to really decide the fate of the other planets. We've discovered other systems where planets migrate and that hot Jupiters cause havoc. But what about our own solar system? Our planets certainly seemed fixed in their rigid clockwork orbits. Earth has been the same distance from the sun for four and a half billion years, long enough to create an atmosphere, build mountains, and evolve life. But where was Earth before it settled in this position? Where did our planet come from? Well, when we started discovering planets around other stars, when we started finding planets in completely unexpected places, places we'd never thought you could possibly form a planet, we had to go back to the drawing board and say, wow, planets can move. Planets can really move. Maybe that happened here. The crazy results that suggest Jupiter might have changed orbit might not be mistakes after all. Instead, planetary migration 
could be the key that unlocks many of the mysteries of how our solar system came to be. Now that we've taken this tool of planetary migration that we started to understand by looking at planetary and other stars, we've realized that it's absolutely critical to understand how our solar system formed and evolved. And central to it all is mighty Jupiter. Certainly in our planetary system, Jupiter is the king. It's over 300 times more massive than the Earth. So Jupiter wins. Jupiter decides what happens. The inescapable truth seems to be that planets move. And if it can happen in exoplanetary systems, it can happen in ours. If we want to make a model that explains how our solar system came to be, we have to break the brass rods and set the planets free. Once we accept the idea that the planets can move, we can begin to explain some of the unsolved mysteries of the solar system. Kevin Walsh has developed a model of the early solar system that involves a wild dance of the planets. It's an intricate and chaotic dance, and if it had gone slightly differently, it could have stopped our developing solar system in its tracks. In his model, Jupiter takes a wild ride through the solar system. takes us right back to the moment of birth, when Jupiter had just formed from the cloud of gas. The key is that though Jupiter is really big, it's 300 times the mass of the Earth, the gas disk around the sun was much more massive. And so the gas can actually push Jupiter in towards the sun. As soon as it was born, Jupiter began to migrate inwards. Over the course of half a million years, it spiraled in towards the sun it was on its way to becoming a hot Jupiter. So the idea that you could form something as big as Jupiter and have it pushed inward by the gas disk actually makes a fair amount of sense because we see it, we see it all over. But something stopped Jupiter from crashing into the sun or ending up as a hot Jupiter. So if it formed and started migrating inwards, there must have been a mechanism to stop it and bring it back out to the outer part of the solar system. We think the key to stop its inward migration, to keep it from going all the way in towards the sun, is the presence of Saturn. While Jupiter was on its wild ride, Saturn was born. Saturn is also growing. It's going through the same process that Jupiter did. It's building the big core, and it's getting really massive. And once it gets really massive as well, it can move in the disk also. And it too began spiraling in towards the sun. So as Saturn is racing inwards, it gets very close to Jupiter. And they actually get close enough, they get, they get locked in a resonance, where their orbital periods are, are closely aligned and they interact very, very closely gravitationally. Now when these two get really close, it actually stops Jupiter's inward migration. The two planets were involved in a kind of gravitational dance. And as they came close, Jupiter changed direction and was flung back to the outer solar system. Just like a sailing ship changing course in a grand tack. 